I'm Rick Jensen. Welcome to another On the Water episode of Rick's Fly Bench. Today I want to take you to Maple Lake. Now, I gotta tell you the truth, having lived in the Comox Valley for over 30 years, this is the first year I fished Maple Lake, and it's hard to explain why that I've ignored it for so long. Part of the reason is that I've got a trailered boat and you can't get a trailered boat down into there. For the longest time that's the only real boat I have. Uh, I picked up a pontoon boat a couple of years ago and now it's opened up some new opportunities to lakes that don't have a, a boat launch that can handle a trailered boat. Uh, it's really close to home and according to Go Fish BC's website it was stocked four times in 2022 with over 6,000 trout and in 2023 it's already been stocked with 2,000 trout. It's a well stocked lake and it's well worth my time to get down there to hone the fly fishing skills that I have and to keep them sharp. The access to Maple Lake might be a little confusing for some who've never been there before but it really isn't all that difficult. On the Comox Valley Parkway you want to turn north on Minto Road and go past the Cumberland Cemetery. A culvert will take you under the New Inland Island Highway to a gravel road. That gravel road is an industrial road but uh, you're just crossing it onto the little access road that reaches Maple Lake. From there on down there's two very rough roads that go to the lake that are less than 100 meters long but they aren't uh, very accessible for low uh, hanging vehicles with uh, low clearance. Um, so you can walk down from the top or if you're going to fish the shoreline and there are many trails around the lake uh, reaching shore fishing spots or if you've got a vehicle with high clearance you can go down to the beach on the left hand road and uh, launch a small boat down there. So like I said this is my first year ever fishing Maple Lake and so I went uh, twice in the last week to test it out. Uh, I'm going to show you the episodes here and I hope you enjoy them. So again, this has been a fantastic uh, evening. We've only been out here about, um, let's see, it's 6.40, about two and a half hours. And um, seven, eight fish, um, maybe more, on the floating line strike indicator with a chronomid below it. My um, velvet tuxedo, the black, with the, and this time with the white bead. Um, I tried three different kinds. They were taking them all. I tried the bourbon and black. They were taking that. Um, just wanted to experiment and uh, yeah, it's been a great evening. So Maple Lake just outside of Cumberland, um, a fantastic little fishery. Oh, missed a strike there. So I've got a dry line on here. I've got my uh, 10 foot six weight. I find that uh, when I'm casting a dry line with a long leader, a uh, 10 foot rod just gives me a little bit bigger loop and the easier casting. Um, yeah, like I said, I've got uh, the strike indicator, and you see it's very tiny. It's uh, I'm using a steel head. There, there we go. There's a tape. Oh, lost him. Steel head uh, corky for uh, strike indicator with a toothpick uh, jammed in it. I find that these little trout, when these shorter leaders and uh, light leaders, I like a smaller strike indicator. There's another hit. There we go. Yep, they're in there. Let's put it out there. 
and uh, it works really well without spooking the fish. I uh, don't need that big, a big indicator. Um, so yeah, a lot of fun. Uh, just uh, chucking with the dry line. Um, the uh, number 14 chronomid is about eight to 10 feet below the uh, indicator. And um, yeah, and they're just uh, taking it eagerly over and over again. A lot of fish stocked in here. And I imagine they're hungry. And there's a chronomid hatch going on. You can see the swallows flying around the lake, picking them off the surface. So there's definitely a hatch going on. Uh, great little lake, Maple Lake, right, uh, right outside of Courtney, between Courtney and Cumberland. In Cumberland itself, actually, technically. See if we can get another strike here for you. Just love the visual aspect of uh, watching the strike indicator and seeing the strike like that. Not sure the camera's picking it up. It's such a small indicator that it might you not might not be able to see it there. But uh, I can. I'm just inching it in, just inch the line in, just to keep some tension on it. There we go. There's a fish. There we go. That's a nice little, little spunky. So many of these fish in here. They stock it about five times a year here. And uh, so there's no lack of fish. That one came in pretty quickly. There we go. New fly, well, new to the kit channel, but I've tied it for some time, called the Velvet Tuxedo. And this one's a little bigger, also a little darker. Colored up fish. Well, I don't know if you can see that fly. It's gotten pretty beat up there. It's been chewed up by six, seven trout already, so I'm gonna change that up. Put that back out there. A little roll cast to pick it up. And uh, let's see if we can pick up another fish. Yeah, it's been really cold for April. Um, we even had uh, snow yesterday here in the area. Um, a very cold spring compared to the last couple of years. I guess we've been spoiled with early warm weather. And uh, this year it's cold, very chilly. Well, that's kept the fishing good longer. This shallow, this lake is pretty shallow. Maximum depth is about 30 feet. So really it's only good fishing until April, May. Um, if it's a warm year, only April. And um, and then it picks up again in November. Uh, so it stays warm right through the summer and in the, into the fall. But the fishing is good in through the winter months, as long as it's not frozen over. And that freezing over is a rarity here. Oh, and it got nice and calm this evening. It was, the breeze had picked up there for a while and made things difficult. The rises didn't seem to be happening and the fish were off been a, about a half an hour without a fish and now now that it's calmed down we're right back on again 
I'll get this one, get this one in the net and uh, sent on his way. They're nice little fish here. Look at that. There we go. Beautiful fish. Barb's hooks out. There we go. Little Fraser Valley on your way. Hey, good bud. There we go. Coming in again, right into the evening. Beautiful. Bring them up in the net here. There we go. Right on. comes out so easy. There we go. And that's it. Hey, we're gonna head in here. A wonderful evening. Afternoon actually. Um gorgeous little place. I'm glad I came. Sun's just setting and I'm gonna head home for supper. Uh, the snow line's still pretty low in the mountains. I wish I could capture that for you. I think I might on another camera. But I've uh, got a new bunch of fish here. First time out, I'm definitely coming back. Great place to fish, Maple Lake. Okay, so we're here on day two on Maple Lake, just outside of Courtney, actually in the uh, municipal limits of Cumberland. And uh, see, as you can see, it's a gorgeous day. There's trout rising everywhere. I can't wait to get out there. But uh, I came back for a second day. I wanted to get some better uh, video footage for you guys to see. And uh, I hope I do that. You can let me know in the comments and you be the judge of that. But I'm looking forward to getting out there and see what kind of trout action there is today. Um, see you on the water. while to figure this out today, but uh, here we are, into a fish. Uh, I have to try a number of different things before we got into one. But there we go, first fish of the day. GoPro, stop recording. So it took a while to figure it out. I've been out here about an hour and I thought it was all depth. I was trying to fish different depths with the fly and uh, so I was trying to get down close to the bottom and then uh, work different depths and areas and uh, turns out it was the fly. The, uh, the other night when I was here, it didn't matter which bronomid I had on, uh, they would take it. But today, the white bee, they didn't want the white bee. Um, I had one or two hits on it, nothing consistent, and now I've switched to a brown magic bee, my velvet tuxedo fly, and I've had constant hits and landing a few fish now. So it's uh, made to play around. So there's another one on the uh, velvet tuxedo. Yeah, beautiful day today. Fishing's been difficult, but uh, I think we may, may figure it out eventually. That looks like a little bit of success. line to tangle on it will. Every little thing that sticks out <laughs> always grabs a line. Yeah, got to figure a way around it. Anyway, making it work. 
So these crazy fish have had at least three hits on the indicator today. They take it right down, I can feel them tugging on the line and then they spit it out. It's just a whole lot of fun. They're very, uh, very willing fish. We got into another fish here. The crazy fish today, they seem to be wanting a troll that just spent the last half an hour trolling around the lake. And I get onto this shoal where I started again, trolling right into it, and there's another one. Well, the whole <laughs> that just goes to show you, you never can uh, rule anything out. The way they want it today, that's the way they're going to get it. Well, get this one on its way. Nice fish, nice fish. Go. Another one on the velvet tuxedo. Let's get that. Oh, he's a real jumper, this one. Oh, this one struck under the indicator, so it does work too, right? <laughs> oh, there he goes. We're going to let him go anyway. There's another one. Took a while to figure it out today. But this, this is a lot of fun now. Set free. Oh, that's a bit of a darker fish. Colored up. Again, probably stocked last year. And he tripped the indicator. Get that reset. And get him put out there. Little Oop, I don't want to squeeze him. Yeah, he's a little feisty one. There you go. Fraser Valley, colored up Fraser Valley rainbow. Back he goes. There we go. I think this is going to be the last one of the day. Oh, it's a feisty fish. that one back. A lot of fun it's been this afternoon. Nice chunky rainbows. Not very big as far as interior fish go and as far as what we can get in terms of cutthroat here on the island. But uh, still a lot of fun. Great way to hone your indicator skills. And that flies pretty chewed up. That's about a dozen fish on that one. <laughs> All right I think we're gonna call that one quits and uh, See you on shore. Well, it was a great two afternoons on Maple Lake. As you can see, it's a great little fishery right here in downtown in the heart of the Comox Valley. Um, it's surrounded by wilderness. There's a lot of wildlife uh, that we I saw over the last couple of days. There were otters, eagles, uh, loons, several species of ducks. And of course, then there's the fish. And it's a well-stocked lake, stocked more than uh, four times a year by the Freshwater Fishery Society, so it's loaded with trout. Um, like you see, they don't get terribly big, but uh, they're fine eating and uh, they're very willing fish. In fact, they were striking the indicator numerous times through the afternoon and sometimes the swivel too, taking it down. So I'd highly recommend coming out, uh, get your freshwater fishing license and take somebody fishing. It's, a, it's close to home. You can get some kids out here uh, and catch fish right from shore. Um, but it's a, it's a better place to take a canoe or a kayak or even a little uh, pontoon boat like this or a rowboat. Uh, it is a bit of a rough road down. You need a vehicle with good clearance to get down the road down to the beach down here. It doesn't have to be four-wheel drive, but uh, a pickup truck or something with high clearance will be a lot easier to manage down the short uh, rough road from the uh, main line down to the lake. But I highly encourage you to come out and enjoy the fishing. Uh, it was a great day. I'm certainly coming back to this lake now that I've discovered discovered it uh, with my pontoon boat. I, you can't get a trailered boat down here. The road's too rough for that. And that's the thing that stopped me in the past from coming here with, with uh, the family. But now that I've got the pontoon boat, I'll definitely be coming back year after year. 
Uh, we'll see you at home and we'll wrap it up. Thanks for joining me. Bye for now.